Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Daily Graphic and to the Graphic Communications Group Limited. Uh, congratulations for winning the most outstanding teacher award for this year. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. Good. Um, before we delve into anything, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Mm, okay. So I'm Stella Jima Alavi. I love Jima. Um, I grew up partly with my father and my auntie. So growing up as a little girl, I saw my father teach and I admired him. So I wanted to be like him. And then I also wanted to be a journalist <laughs> and then a lawyer. But along the way, my first love, um, which is teaching, kept coming back. And so I stuck to that. I went to Binkum Secondary School after my junior high. And it was at Binkum that um, the passion grew stronger. Because my literature and English teacher, I would day was super excellent and she thought the subject so well that I felt this is where I belonged. Right. So when I completed SS and I had to go to um, tertiary, I bought a form for University of Ghana and then daddy said I should add training college hmm. and then I added training college. So when the admissions came, Legon came and then the training college came. But then he said, go to the training college. So I went to the Presbyterian Women's College of Education, mm. Ibrui. And then afterwards, I started teaching. And then I went back to the University of Education for my first degree. And then I, went to, I came back to Legon for my first master's. Then went back to Winneborough again for my MPhil. Mm. Yes. So that's all about me. I'm married. I have kids. How many kids do you have? I have three kids. Two boys and a girl. Right. So growing up, did you always want to be a teacher? Yes. That's all I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, I think the drive actually seeing daddy and then also my interaction with young people. I realized that some of them didn't see the essence of going to school. Mm. And so I wanted to be at a position where I will give them reason to be in school. Okay. And the best reason is to become a teacher. In which schools have you taught so far? I've taught in um, three schools. So I started off at Nanankovia Tichua, at Mampong, Catherine in the Eastern Region. And then I came to Ajengano Adma, and then Adenta Community School. And what subjects have you been teaching all along? Okay, so the first year, I tried a lot of subjects. So I've taught visual arts, mm -hmm. I thought irony, I thought science. What else did I teach? I think these three subjects. Visual arts, science, and then irony. Now visual art because when I was posted, the school I was posted to Ajengano, um, they had an English teacher. Mm -hmm. And so in order to get a posting, the subject that they needed a teacher for was visual art. So I accepted posting. And when I got there, just as a teaching for a while, the head teacher realized that my area was the English. Mm. So I was assigned to the subject. And I accepted posting again <laughs> to a different school. I needed a transfer. And so I accepted to teach science. I taught it for, I think, a month. And then my English was given back to me. Mm. Yes. Which of the subjects has been the most challenging? I think they have all been a learning curve. Mm. Yes, they've all been a learning curve. Um, the visual art has rather um, got a lot of influence on the teaching of the English in that I'm able to design a lot of teaching aids okay. out of my the little background of visual arts that I got, a lot of creating stuff. Um, science gave me the opportunity to learn more. And so none of them, I should say, was a bit challenging. None, yeah. none, yeah. Right. So can you just describe the feeling or how it just uh, 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 like being a teacher? It feels 
feels good for me it feels good because that's what i've always wanted to do and the fact that you get to school to meet these young ones to impact in their lives to inspire them to push them to innovate it's enough reason for me to be a teacher mm. um, because at the end of the day you see the learners you thought them you see them grow up you see them occupy positions and you smile so it feels good being a teacher so how do you relate to your pupils or students hmm so um just like how a mother does bittersweet mm. when i have to put you on the right track i'll do that when we have to play along we do that because before you can touch the brain you should touch the heart. Once you're able to touch the heart of the learners, yeah, good to go. You're teaching and they pay attention. But when the ambience, when the environment is not um, conducive, you'll be teaching, you think you're doing all the teaching, but you realize that their minds are mm -hmm. actually somewhere else. So I relate to them beautifully and also strictly. Because sometimes if you don't put strict measures in place they will not concentrate and they will not take your assignments seriously you you earlier on said that the joy of being a teacher is just seeing them uh, your students grow yeah and occupy positions yeah but what has what have been your most challenging experience as a teacher and most rewarding challenging so um, for the challenge with teaching, I think it cuts across. We have a challenge of infrastructure, furniture, and teaching aids. All those challenges are there. But in the midst of all those challenges, um, one of the things that I told myself was to be an extra teacher. Because I keep saying that I'm a teacher by choice. I chose to become a teacher. And whatever you choose to be, you become a better and a better and a greater version of it. And so in the midst of all those um, things not being available, I still try to go the extra mile to make the learners better. Hmm. The most rewarding experience? being an outstanding teacher <laughs> <laughs> wow. and also um i think it's it's a rewarding experience but the most mm, should be my learners being well positioned okay yes i think that is the most rewarding this is rewarding um but the most has been seeing them you know go and then find their place in the space Good. yes did you ever anticipate that you were going to win the most outstanding teacher award yes along the way how okay so in somewhere 2018 um i got nominated in my district okay. and so which is the adentan municipal education directorate so i was declared as the outstanding teacher the best teacher in my district and then I got the opportunity to move to the next level, which is the region. Okay. And then I won the most outstanding teacher for Greater Accra. Wow. What, <laughs> what, what year was that? In 2019. So 2018? Yes. 2019? Yes. Uh -huh. And then in 2020, um, I got a recognition. So I happened to be, be a global schools advocate. Um, it's a network that helps to push sustainable development agenda. So I won the Global School Advocate for the year. And then in 2021, I'm um, Ax Educational Consult. So Ax, they are the organizers for Global Teacher Award. So we have the Global Teacher Prize, which comes with money. Um, that has been organized by the Vaki Foundation. And then the Ax, um, DS is just an award. So a citation and then, uh, you know, a plug that you've achieved something so in 2021 i got recognized by them i got a global award so i got my certificate some money no it didn't come with any <laughs> money <laughs> it didn't come with any money but it was rewarding even at that point 
um, because to see that your job has been recognized, to see that you are doing something and people really appreciate what you are doing was good for me. And so when the opportunity came, I remember telling somebody that I will go to, I will go for the best teacher. I will be the best teacher. And I think I got a tape off, but I didn't know that was what that man wanted for me. I thought I was doing my thing, teaching, organizing programs for the young people, organizing programs for the teachers. And then along 2018, when I won the best teacher for Adenta, I got a new head teacher, Master Ibrahim Mumuni. So when Mr. Mumuni came to the school, he would stand at the top. And then when he sees that I'm going out for break with the learners, he will click a picture. <laughs> He take a photo of what I'm doing. So he called me one day and then um, he said, Mama G, I want you to be taking pictures, be keeping records of the things you do. Because you can tell somebody that I've been doing this, I've been doing that. But where is the evidence of the things you've been doing? I didn't know he had plans. I thought I was just doing my thing. And so from there, he would take the pictures if he realizes that I wasn't doing that. Mm -hmm. So I became intentional right. when I got to region in 2019. So then I got the chance that I could apply for the national. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that I had nothing to back up the things I was doing. So you get people to testify that you've done this, you've done that. But in your absence, in the absence of the people, what is that to show that you've done this, you've done this, you've done that? There should be pictorial, um, there should be pictures, because I understand pictures speaks louder than words. Yeah, yeah so I hear. <laughs> so I started taking pictures, and when I organize my programs, I'll take pictures. When I, yeah, I was taking pictures and then sometimes I became intentional. So maybe I want to video my lesson. I'm teaching something new. I've brought out a new innovation. I want to video that. So I'll just ask permission from the head teacher and I'll video my lesson and post on YouTube. The back of the lens with my face, not their face. Okay. So I started doing that. And um, we go on playtime, our video, I'll post it. So I started doing that. So when the opportunity came, I just poured all in. And then they came back, checked my things. So I had something to show. And um, I had told God that I wanted to win. Wow. Yes. Yes, God, you remember, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So would you advise or encourage any of your relations to be a teacher? Why? Not only my relations. I've got people I'm mentoring now okay. to become teachers. I've got some of my learners tend to become teachers because of me. Just yesterday, I met a young lady. Her name is Blessing. And so I was coming this way. I wanted to pass by the seamstress, the fashion, uh, my, my seamstress's shop. And then she followed me there. Okay. So when she came, she said, hello, Auntie Jima. And I said, hello. She said, I know you. And I said, okay. Um, you thought my younger siblings. And I said, okay, that's nice. I've been admiring you from afar. And I was like, really? <laughs> he said, yes, and I've read your books. So I write books as well. Wow. I've read one of your books and I have it in my bag. And I was like, really? She brought the book out and showed it to me. And what she told me was that she did journalism, mm -hmm. but now she wants to start teaching. Wow. Now, if because of me, because of the things I'm doing, people want to be teachers, then... I don't have any reason not to encourage people to become teachers because at the end of the day, they are not just going to change lives, they are going to inspire generations. So one of my kids definitely will become a teacher, just like how daddy spoke me and pushed me to become a teacher. That's very interesting. Yeah. Have you won any other award apart from the best Yes, teacher? yes. 
So, um, apart from Best Teacher, I've got other recognitions. So, Global, Young Global Leaders Network. Um, they gave me a recognition, a citation. Um, the Teacher Training Association of Ghana. I frequent the place a lot, even now, uh, because it got me at a point. When I was a student leader, when I was a college president, um, I got a chance to interact with a lot of them. And so now I feel I'm in the capacity to encourage them to put up their best and be the best, even as they come out to teach. So I got recognition from them. Um, they organized a She Excellence Award. And then I got a citation from them as well. I was also awarded this year by Humanitarian Awards Global. Mm. Yes. Um, which of the awards? Yeah, but my church, ICGC Holy Ghost Temple, I got a citation from PVV, mm. the precious uh, vessel of virtue. I got a citation from them. And a few others here and there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, earlier I spoke of writing books. How many books have you written so far? I have four. And which are? So I have Girls and Ladies Greatness Guide. They are all on Amazon. Okay. I have Beyond Today. I have Getting the Grade. That's a study guide. Um, because along the way, I realized that my young people didn't know how to study. Mm. They had challenges studying. Um, there were times that they would tell you, Aunt Jim, I'm learning, no, but it's not going. And so I thought, okay, let me research. Let me put something together to help them. Because if the mind is not ready to study, you pick the book and you'll be at the first line for hours and you sleep off. And so I wrote that book to guide them. And they will testify that it's been very helpful. And I gave it out to them for free. Wow. Yes. I'm sure you sponsor now. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be a major donor. That would be lovely to do that. So I get, I get friends to support um, the vision. And so when I write the books, I give it out to them. Yes. You have people who print for you for free or you pay for it? I pay for it. So um, as they are on Amazon, the proceeds I get there and then the support I get from friends, I use it to print more. As I said here, um, I've run out of stock and so you support plus the others around. You support <laughs> and we print small books. Yeah. Wonderful. So, you have uh, told us how you, you started winning awards from district yeah, to yeah, regional, yeah. then to national. Yeah. How did you receive news <laughs> that you had won the ultimate for this year? So, we had gone through a vigorous process. Um, you had to write about the things you are doing in the classroom, beyond the classroom, your teaching approach. Um, community service, um, recognition of your work, mm -hmm. uh, how you help your learners to meet global standard. So in all of the things I submitted, there was also an interview where you showed them <laughs> evidence-based interview, evidence of the things you claim you are doing. Mm -hmm. Now they will go online to check on the things that you are doing as well. They'll come to your classroom to observe your teaching. They will look through attendance book. They'll look through your lesson notes books mm. since you started teaching. Mm. <laughs> um, they'll look through your exercise books. So the exercises you give to the learners, are they smart? So specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. They'll check all that. Um, your school performance improvement plan. Are you involved or you are just a passive teacher? They check all that. Um, your interaction with the parents. Um, do you support the parents to gain placements? And that's one of my strong points. Um, because once I had identified the kind of learner you are, if yours is not books, I follow you to your house. I speak to your parents and help you fit properly mm. after the BEC. 
So I've been helping them with placements and I got parents to testify to that fact. And having their children, some of them in the technical schools, doing amazingly well. And so we went through all those processes. And then um, the final day, we were not told, we didn't know. We were all seated. How many were you? Um, so the shortlist for the teaching category, we were 15. Mm. 15 for the teaching category. And then somebody won best primary teacher, best KJ teacher, um, best senior high school teacher, best junior high school teacher. And then it got to the, um, the, the second runner-up, like, overall. Then it came to uh, first runner-up. And then <laughs> we were there. I had told God to let me win. Did my faith um, shake at a point? No. But I was anxious. Because um, I didn't know what was going to happen. Mm. I, I just had an open mind. People were winning awards. You were just sitting there. Yes. You didn't know whether you were no, winning. No, I, I didn't like those awards. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like those awards. Mm -hmm. Because I told God I wanted the house. Mm. Yes. I, I told God. I told God five years ago when I decided that I'm going for this. I want to. So I told God I wanted the house. So as I was seated and they were mentioning the things, <laughs> I was just sitting down. And you know the interesting thing? My headmistress has got so much confidence and love in me eh? mm. because of all the things I do around and she told me that, you know, you are going to win. Mm. She had confidence I was going to win. She was very confident. She said, you know, you are going to win. When they mention your name, just relax. Meanwhile, she's the one when they mention my name. She was screaming all over. <laughs> she said, they are going to, you are going to win. Um, you have to carry yourself like a lady. Auntie Franca, I love you. She's Mrs. Francisca Edu Saforo. Mm. She said, when they mention your name, just relax. And then walk there. <laughs> so I was seated. I was seated. And along the way, we made presentations. So I had also had, took part in the presentations. Had received the awards, except two of us. Mm. So it was Lava Jima and another guy. <laughs> and so I don't know, maybe others were tipping the guy to win. Others were tipping me to win. So it was the two of us seated. And they mentioned, and the winner, the most outstanding teacher for the year, goes to, and the person is from Adenta, and I got up because I'm the only one from yeah, Adenta. Adenta. Right, right. So I got up, and I remember I just put my hands on my head, and I said, "Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus," because it was something I was praying for. Mm. Um, I told God I want to be that mirror that people will look at in the profession and have faith again. Um, sometimes we say that, oh, for teachers are rewarded in heaven. Mm. But I'm that mirror and it's going to manifest that people will see and say that um, you can enjoy in the land of the living, as the Bible says, as a teacher before you die, before you receive your reward in heaven. Mm. And so I'm receiving part here. And I will see the rest in heaven. So, most outstanding teacher has come and gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is still here. What next? Mm. What next? So, I always want to be the better version of myself. I'm looking at being the first doctor in a busy school. First doctor in Ghana teaching in a business school. Mm. I don't know how long I'm going to stay there as a teacher in the business school. But I want to be the first doctor. Helping um, other teachers there to help create strategies, new strategies to make the teaching and learning better. I'm also looking at um, being in a position where my voice will be heard. And then I can influence the session around the table when we are talking about basic education, because that's my interest. Okay. Because if the foundation is not solid, then what happens to the structure? 
it'll collapse at a point. And so I'm looking at that. I'm also looking at being the leading trainer of teachers and young people across the globe. That when we talk about conference speakers, when we talk about people touching the lives of teachers and the young people, my name will be mentioned. So talking about being the first teacher in the business school in the country it means that you have plans of going to school again. Mm -hmm. How soon are we expecting that? Very soon. Very soon. Yes. So how do you personally see the role you play as a teacher? It's a very important profession that you find yourself mm -hmm. in. How do you see the role that you play? My role, personally, and the role of most teachers, transcends beyond the four walls of the school. So we are playing the role of mothers, fathers, doctors, <laughs> lawyers, because their parents leave them in your care, and you have to take care of them. When they are not well, you have to take care of them, and so a doctor comes in. I play the role of a lawyer because when they have issues, sometimes I think I, I, I channel, I champion it to see that um, the right things are being done for them. And so the, the role goes beyond just teaching in the classroom, going into their homes, knowing their friends. For me, it's a personal business for me. And all my learners are aware of that, that once you are in my care, you're my personal business mm. until so you're married. So not just teach you here and we are done. As you go forward, I follow you. I visit you even in secondary school. I check up on you in the university till you are done. If you are learning a trade, I check up on you and ensure that you are doing it well. Mm. Yeah. Some teachers are classified as bad, others as good. In your view, why that classification? Do we have bad teachers? Mm, I don't think so. We don't have bad teachers? I, I don't think we have bad teachers. Um, some teachers are not innovative enough. Okay. But we can't say they are bad. Right. Uh, because some of the resources are not there. And because the resources are not there, they feel that they are not there. What should I do? Mm. I'll teach anyway. And so maybe we, we, I'll say we don't have innovative teachers. Right. But um, teachers who try to improvise, so improvisation, mm -hmm. who try to improvise in the classroom um, are good teachers. Teachers who try to know that, you know, understand the emotions of the learners are good teachers. And so my teaching philosophy, I have a philosophy in teaching, and it's to, be, it's to teach holistically. Okay. So looking at the cognitive domain of the child, the psychomotor, as well as the affective. And so I'm looking at helping them with their emotional skills. Because if a child comes to class and the child is um, quiet, moody throughout, whatever you are teaching might not stick. And so getting, as I mentioned earlier, getting into their heart, mm -hmm. getting to, to know what is really bothering them, stepping out to play with them. And those are some of the things that we can do to stand out as good teachers. And that's what I do. How do you see the average Ghanaian teacher? Mm. The average Ghanaian teacher works a lot <laughs> because the salary cannot buy a car. <laughs> The average Ghanaian teacher is able to build if he or she manages the resources well, but not a big house. Mm. The average Ghanaian teacher um, is average. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's average. So what it's can, average. How can we ensure that they, after being talking about tools, tools and tools and yeah. teaching materials? Yeah. How can we resource the average Ghanaian teacher to be able to deliver on his or her mandate? So, um, we can do that when we prioritize basic education. Mm. So, I, that, you mean that for now we are not prioritizing basic um, education? We are prioritizing, but I think it has to be 100%. 
So what percentage will you give it? I won't give it a percentage, <laughs> but it should be 100%. It should be 100 Yes, it should be 100%. Because I mentioned the foundation. Yeah. That's how come I'm still in the basic school. Okay. Because the foundation is so critical. It's so important. Just like the, the formative stage of a child. There are some things that if the child doesn't get growing up, the child grows up and you see that gap. Mm. If the child grows up and doesn't get a good social interaction in the community, the child becomes antiso antisocial. And that antisocial nature affects everything of that individual. And so just like that, the basic school needs all the, all the resources. Because if that foundation is not solid, Ask the professors and the doctors and all the, those at the university. They'll tell you that they mark essays and they ask questions. Did this person go to secondary school? Did this person go to a basic school? And so if we are able to give 100% attention to the foundation, then the future will look beautiful. Hmm. I well said. Um, let's say somebody comes to you and say, I'm so inspired by you. I want to become a teacher. What advice do you have for that person? Okay, so I've got some. I've got three of them coming to me. About how many? Hmm. I've got about 12 people I'm mentoring now. Just after yeah. you won the award? Just after I won the award. Already I had um, sheets go. I have a network of young people who have decided to be teachers. Okay. Who are in college. And I'm mentoring them. Oh, wonderful. Yes. And now these people who have come to me, some of them are already in the university. Some of them, they had not found their bearing. Some of them, and so that's where one of my projects is um, helping them with a dream plan. You look at yourself, you look at your interests, you look at the things that you love the most. Because if you think about only the money, you'll not be happy where you find yourself. Mm. Start with that thing that gives you joy, and the money will follow. And so I'm taking them through some grooming processes and helping them. Some are also in college, but they've been inspired to stay in the profession. Some thought that, oh, let me just finish college and think about something else. But people are getting, you know, um, renewed perception about the profession. What is the cause of that? Because of me. How do you inspire them? You know, I'm the youngest to actually win that award. Wow. Yes. And you, so you want to tell us how old you are? I'm 34. I just turned 34, actually. This month? Last two months. Okay. Yes. Wow. So the youngest to win the Best yes. Teacher Award. Yes. Yes. So you think that that's why they are inspired? Yes. And so they, they feel that, they believe that you don't need to be 50, 60, um before you win the award, once you do the job well, God have a way of rewarding you. You've earlier alluded to the fact that a teacher's reward must not always be said mm. to be in heaven. Mm. It means that you don't agree with that assertion. Not at all. So what advice do you have for colleagues like you, but who are maybe, they're in the profession all right, but they're somehow frustrated, they are not enjoying it again, they want out. And uh, indeed, many people are leaving the profession because they think it has got nothing to offer them. What advice do you have for them? Hello there, teachers. Um, one of the, let me start with three things. So number one, see a man who dil diligently does his work. He stands before where? Kings and not mere men. So once you are doing your work diligently, God has a way of rewarding you. Number two, if teaching is the only thing you are doing, teaching is the only thing I do, okay. and I talk as well. So my side business <laughs> is talking and writing books, not at the expense of the learners. And so if you are doing other things on the side, and you are able to apportion the time well, and it's not eating into the time of the learners, your reward is right here and you have it. And so it all boils down to you committing fully to the teaching because that's where you are. And trust me, you will smile. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. 
Well, lastly, but not the least, um, you've spoken at length about the foundation being very necessary mm. and uh, you want the investment or whatever to be 100%. Yeah. Aside that, what is the best way, I mean, that the government would be able to prop up the teaching profession? Hmm. So the best way is to get a lot of um, structures in place. Structures meaning? School buildings. School buildings. Yes. We need a lot of school buildings. Um, we need a lot of furniture in the schools. We need a lot of teaching learner resources in the schools. Some of the books are not available. We need them in the schools. Um, supervision should be more. Now, now it is more because there is no stone like that that have been left unturned. They are making sure that everything is done properly, checking attendance here and there, and so that is good. So they should, be, they should put up a lot of structures. Um, the teachers should also be well motivated. Parents should be allowed to support because I believe that where parents are allowed, because some parents have the wherewithal. So parents with the wherewithal, when they come in to support, then everything will not depend on the government because to sustain the school and the learners, it is not a one-way affair, the government's affair. The government has got a role to play. Parents have got a role to play. The community has got a role to play, as well as other stakeholders. Okay. And so when we allow the other stakeholders to come in, then we will get the holistic, the whole school, the good school that we are looking at, yeah. my view. All right. Well, I said the final question, but just something just cropped up. You know, people believe in integrating people with a kind of uh, disability. I said that disability doesn't mean inability. Yeah. People with special conditions like cerebral palsy and other things. People think that they should be integrated into the people, uh, classes with the normal people. What is your take on that? You think we should have special schools for them to take care of them because of their condition or they should be integrated in the mainstream school? Okay, so that's the one of the projects I've been championing. Mm helping learners with special abilities to be integrated, to join the mainstream school. You know, once um, you join the mainstream school, it helps with their stabilization. Mm. Because if they all find themselves in a confined area, they see themselves as the same, so the behavior is the same. Okay. And so I have helped few parents get placement for their children with special needs into these normal schools. And there shouldn't be any segregation because the, the most important thing is that the teachers take care of the individuality of every child. Mm. Before you can touch all the learners in the class, you have to understand that each of them are different. And so when we come in, um, in terms of where we have the disabled we shouldn't even say disabled. We have the special children, children with, special, with special abilities. Once we are able to identify them and pay close attention to them, we are good to go. So I agree to the integration mm. and not segregation. So the school for the deaf and the blind and all those schools, they should be closed down? They, the they can never be closed down. For, for the blind school, it's important to have the blind school. Okay. Because when you have a blind person in your class, we are looking at the other special... Okay. Not the deaf and the not blind. The deaf and the, not the deaf and the blind. Okay. Yes. Okay. But the other special yes, children can be in the mainstream classroom, okay. but not blind and deaf. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Do you have anything to add? Maybe you haven't asked you any question. You want uh, to say something? I started a foundation in 2018. Um, I officially registered in 2018 okay. but it started running in 2011 mm. when i came out as a teacher i today foundation i today yes inspire today okay <laughs> inspire today foundation and and i inspire today i have the youngsters and teachers hub where i have other initiatives under it so women in the classroom conference um is an annual event that i've been having I have it this year as well, where I bring female teachers all over the world together.
um, for us to talk about issues affecting the woman in the classroom and then the power woman the power woman in the classroom because we've got a lot of power and then I also have um, Inspire Teacher Summit where we share innovations so we talk about sharing innovations new ways for the teacher what are the new strategies that you've adopted in your classroom as a teacher mm -hmm. let's share it as you share other teachers learn and they pick a thing or two from it and then I also have um, skills on the go so skills on the go will actually come off next month I've been running that for the past five years um, it's a skill session for girls okay. A little biased, yeah. Mm. So I organize it for them after they are BEC and WASI. I bring them together and I get people to help them acquire skills, both hard skills and soft skills. So the soft skills, the skill of public speaking, the skill of emotional intelligence, how to deal with the emotions of a young girl. Uh, the skill of confidence is a skill you need to acquire. It. And then um, beads. Uh, fascinators and other things and the final one is the raw global initiative and that's um, one of the projects that um, as the most outstanding teacher I'm going to champion all of course um, it's helping the children to write their own stories and publish them well wow. I've started it locally in my school okay. and so I'm going to spread it um, not just write, I've seen a lot of writing contests, but after the contest, what next? Let's publish the stories of the young ones. Let other young ones read it and be inspired. So the raw, R small A, capital W, read and write. Okay. Global initiative. Right. Yes. And so daily graphic. Let's partner and let it work. <laughs> <laughs> so I see that you, your whole life is teaching, teaching, teaching. Yes, I'm a teacher by choice, you by birth. You don't have any, any hobbies that you indulge in? My hobbies are writing, talking. So talking is your yeah, hobby. Yes, it's a hobby. <laughs> I write, I talk, and I read. Oh. Yes. And I hang out with the young ones. Wow. Oh. It gives me a lot of joy. Wow. Yeah. You teach your children too at home? I'm yet to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yet to start that one. Okay. Um, it's amazing. I, I've actually, I have to be intentional about it because sometimes when you are teaching them, they feel as mummy. Yeah. Okay. They feel as mummy, but I've started and um, it's working. So I don't see how it goes. Wow. If I can do homeschooling. <laughs> yes. Wow. It's been yeah. good having you here. Thank Stella. you. Thank you. Well, and let me finally say thank you to the National Teaching Council, okay. um, the Ministry of Education, and the Ghana Education Service. And to all my hair teachers, yes, because they help grow me a lot. I'm a better teacher because of the better teachers who came before me. Mm. And my Municipal Director of Education, Ms. Gifty Mose, thank you. And... Um, all my learners and all my colleagues. Yes. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thank been good you. Having thank you. you. <laughs> and we wish it's you all the best. Beautiful being here. Yes. We wish you all the best in everything that you engage in from here. Yeah. 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 So we've been speaking with the most outstanding teacher 2022, Miss Stella Jima Labi from the Adentan Community School. Thank you for watching us and listening to us. Bye.